Hey guys, Shane here, Oz Flight Simmer. Welcome to another episode of Test Drive. This is where we take an aircraft, a utility, a scenery, and we'll take it for a spin around the block and I'll give you my first impressions. Today we are checking out Alabeo's new release, which is the M20R Ovation, which is part of the Mooney family. Now the first Mooney took flight in 1953, um, its introduction was in actually in 1955 and they have been in production pretty much all that time except for a couple of years where the company um, was having some money troubles. If you actually want to purchase the latest and greatest Mooney you're looking around about 690 to 770 thousand. Now the Ovation was introduced in 1994 so what we're looking at is a pretty reasonably new aircraft. Now as we take a look around the outside of the M20R, as you can see it's always the same when it comes to Alabeo, they have very high quality 3D modelling, um, using a lot of the same the assets from all the Carinado aircraft and the Alabeo aircraft, so you know when you look on the outside you're going to have a very high quality, even things like the push rod pushing through there that's attached to the rudder, really high detailed and this aircraft like all the other Alabeo stuff looks pretty awesome so now this is the first Alabeo aircraft that I've had the pleasure of uh, taking a look at it since um, a V4 but the guys have done a really good job with their material shines and reflections and things that you can see if you have a look underneath the window there you can see how the bumping uh, mapping looks like that the the rivets are being pushed in a little bit and that's something I haven't noticed in other aircraft but being as a V4 aircraft just looks like it's done that little bit better now all the gear that comes with so you've got your chocks your tow bar all your different covers for your pita and whatnot your passenger sorry your pilot door opens or the passenger door opens and also the little cargo area at the back and this thing can actually take a fair whack too also comes with the Carinado and Alabeo volumetric side view prop effect that's pretty much in all their aircraft but hey, it looks good. Now the Mooney is one of my favourite GA aircraft. How could you not like it with the uh, reverse swept back horizontal stabiliser? It's just such a unique aircraft, being very low to the ground. I do in fact like how they've uh, recreated the landing gear, looks pretty cool but I've actually got high hopes uh, for this release as it's one of my favorite aircraft so hopefully it lives up to what my expectations will be but we've been saying that let's jump into the copy and we'll have a look at the uh, extra menu add-ons that come uh, with the release Now traditionally Alabeo will come with a few little extras um, in the menu or like your shift button so things like GPS so it's all 2D paneling and some menus um, you've got autopilot there the main menu when you can uh, turn your chocks on and your chocks off and um, all your different things passenger door all those sorts of bits and pieces also you have the option from starting from cold and dark or ready for taxi which is good because the aircraft actually loads in with the engines running. Uh, with this flight today um, we are going to start from a cold and dark scenario. Now all the uh, manual and all that sort of gear and the procedures guys all pretty standard from Alabeo. It's a pretty easy aircraft to get going so you have everything you need. So, But like I said it's an easy aircraft, it's, um, within minutes you'll get it started. One thing I would like to add, it um, comes with the standard noises and clicks of all the instruments uh, which is something I very much think they need to address and update. Now if you're one of those simmers that don't like to read instructions, feel free to uh, follow this part of the video because the startup is following uh, the procedure manual. Now I did find uh, when I was actually starting up, I had a bit of an issue when selecting the fuel tank to start off with. Even though the left tank is got fuel in it and as it is selected, I found out that I always had to change from one side of the tank to the other uh, just to get the engines started.
Now the engine noise has a, a rumble sound which is quite unique and um, I actually like it a lot. So once the engine is started we're going to uh, bring it up to about 700 RPMs until everything settles down and then we'll wind up between 900 to 1000 and we'll wait for the um, engine temperature to come up. Now we're just about ready to get going for the trip and start our taxi so it should be interesting because we are in a quite small aircraft and we do have 280 horses underneath the bonnet with a naturally aspirated engine so uh, that's why you've got that different sound which is cool. If anybody's wondering we are in a Monterey, we are in Orbex's Monterey and uh, we're going to taxi all the way down that weather is pretty good and we're going to be flying out down the coast of Southern California again using Orbex sceneries and then flying out to Catalina which should be interesting because Catalina is like a landing on a aircraft carrier so looking forward to the uh, flight for this aircraft and the landing Now if you've gotten to this part of the video and it's the first time you're actually are watching any of my stuff, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can see more content. You can also jump over to the FS Elite uh, YouTube channel and you can see some of my other videos there as actually partnered with them and you can keep up with the current news of all the flight sim community by checking out uh, FS Elite's website as well. Now the Mooney is quite easy to taxi, a very responsive, only thing to watch out for is the brakes. Feels like they have next to no um, a brake pad so it doesn't stop on the dime, um, takes a fair bit for it to actually slow down. So something to think about um, if you're one of those 40 nautical mile hour uh, people taxiing. Just about to pull up, we'll hold short and we'll get configured for takeoff. Now we are just rolling out to the runway. Because we've got a lot of horses underneath the bonnet, we won't need much space um, for the takeoff. We're gonna be doing a teardrop departure. We'll take off and make a right hand turn and head on course to Catalina Island. So I'm gonna be a little bit quiet now so you can enjoy the roar of the engine as we take off and I'll come back to you shortly. So a plenty of a right rudder pedal as you are going down the, the runway always catches me off guard how much you need to actually input. 
put in uh, but gears are up and we're going up to a thousand feet and we'll begin our right hand turn As we begin our rollout, as we see the airport inside, and we'll fly out of it. I forgot to mention um, you need to have your RPM at 2500, so absolutely a flat stick uh, for takeoff. We're going to check out the uh, autopilot, as this is a first impressions video. This is the first time I've actually used this particular autopilot, so we'll see if we can work it out. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm now actually trimming the aircraft for our descent up because my thinking was if I have to keep hearing that click um, every time I want to adjust the trim for a descent and ascent, it was going to get pretty annoying. So I actually have a side tech trim wheel. I thought it would be easy just to use that. But other than that, the autopilot works great. Went on the GPS mode, no problem. Let's jump to an outside view and uh, see the aircraft as we depart. Welcome back to the flight sim deck. A look at those views of Southern California or Northern California. I'm not sure where the line starts or ends, to be honest with you. But we are traveling just above 6,000 feet on our way to 8,000 for our cruise. Once we get there, we'll take a look at the cabin and the night lighting, and I'll give you my thoughts on those. So, Welcome back. We're about halfway through the flights. Um, everything is running smoothly, so I thought it is overdue in time, or well, the time's overdue, I should say, to take a look at the cockpit. Now, you might see on my channel I actually do a lot of first impressions on the Alabeo and Carinado products, and that's simply because they release uh, more GA aircraft. They pretty much take in turns and have something released every six weeks or so uh, between themselves. So that's why. But my opinion is starting to change of who I think is actually producing the best aircraft out of the two, considering they are sister companies. And I would have to say in the last couple of aircraft is actually Alabeo. And the reason for that is because I just find that their cockpit is a little a bit more crisper. Um, and that's going for my taste to be perfectly honest. Um, Carinado is sort of doing more of the rough and rugged look where this particular aircraft was um, 
originally from 1994 so it is reasonably new and a new looking copy but they have done a superb job as they always do with all of the features you got the reflection of the glass from all the actual cockpit instruments everything um, works where it should be obviously it's not a heavy uh, system aircraft um, so you don't have things like FMC to worry about so pretty much every button or most of the clickable stuff on the front dashboard does work the only issue or glitch I found is with the startup with the tank uh, but with this aircraft they've gone for a quite a clean look now I do love the texturing of the seats there you can see that um, the fabric or what I should say the leather has stretched over the time frame um, but with all Alabay and Carinado, start, Carinado uh, products, just make sure you don't look too closely as you zoom in. Um, you see that sort of detail goes. But I actually really enjoying uh, the, this uh, cockpit and cabin. One of my favorite features or the parts about the uh, cockpit is the actual dashboard. The textures on that dashboard reflecting off the light is absolutely sensational and um, one of my favorites. We'll just go for a, a bit of a walk um, into the back. Obviously it's a small GA uh, single prop aircraft so there's not really much to see but we'll take a look anyway. So they've modelled the fire extinguishers, the belts, as they always do. It's quite interesting to see the um, airframe timer or the engine timer um, down the back there. I don't know if that exists in real life or it's actually in the wrong spot. If you know, please leave a note on the left. The lights don't actually click, so I haven't been able to get those to click. But pretty spacious um, in the back. Awesome views on the wing and uh, being this close you can really, that's the really cool thing I like is seeing the, the sort of bump texturing they've done um, with all the rivets. Um, it's not an exact flat wing which is really cool. We'll just keep spinning around the front and you'll get a bit of a long shot view of the entire copy and then we'll check out the night light. I normally don't do that on these first impressions but um, we'll take a look at it tonight. Okay, just gonna turn the instrument lights on. Turn the brightness up a little bit and then we'll check out the night lighting. We'll just use the uh, preview feature on P3D. Turn the brightness up. See, pretty standard stuff, but enough of what you need to do to um, keep flying the aircraft. But um, yeah, and we'll jump into the outside view and you can see the lights of the aircraft as well. Strobes are look absolutely fantastic, but not really much glow from the nav lights or anything like that. I do have the lights turned on in the cockpit as well. Pretty standard stuff as it is for night lighting. Not really taking use or using the advantage of uh, V4 lighting as such yet.
welcome back how good did that montage look she looked absolutely awesome flying over southern california so in spirit of time and not turning in this to the longest first look uh flight sim video um we have skipped ahead we've descended down to 3000 we're making our approach into catalina so i've just turned the autopilot off just to show you some maneuvers as we are turning around to our right um, the aircraft is um, pretty easy to fly, so long as you get it trimmed up, um, you'll turn left or right, no worries, you won't have to make uh, much input um, on the yoke. So as you can see, you can see just the tip of the yoke there, and um, I'm not really making much input um, at all, so pretty good. So there is Catalina right in front of us, but we'll skip ahead um, to right to the approach and uh, it should be a very interesting landing. Going to have to make another right hand turn because I didn't line up uh, correctly, but that's all right, it's only a little one. It won't cause a go around or anything like that. Uh, just about to put first a notch of flaps down. You can put gears down, flaps down, anything from 140 anything above that will actually affect it this aircraft is a really slippery aircraft it actually has air brakes uh, which pop up so I was actually using those during the descent to muck it around and it stops you just like um, what should I say just like a bus stopping I don't know if that's the best words I could use it's all I could think of at this stage but we'll just say it stops pretty quick. So I'm not going to use the air brakes because I'm slowing down quite well. But I'll actually use them once we touch down into Catalina or Avalon, I should say. Um, because it is a very short runway. Now it's very tricky because you have, um, as you can see at the end of the runway, if you haven't used Orbex, a version of Catalina, um, there's a ridge but the ridge drops away but it actually looks like it's a ridge that you need to get over and it can actually be quite confusing sometimes as you get closer to my puppy lights say I'm a little bit low but that's all right gears are all way all the way down and uh, flaps all the way down as well so I'm gonna leave you there as we're coming closer and I'll come back to you just after we land Wow, that was a really cool landing. I think I ended up landing on the right gear first, but it just sailed on there, in there, I should say, very smooth. So um, quite stable um, on the fly-in for the landing. So very, very happy with that. And I really didn't need to use any brakes. I did whack those air brakes out, um, and it pretty much this does go uphill a little bit, so um, it, it slows down naturally. So, but that was cool. We'll get off the runway here, and um, we'll go down the taxiway, and we'll have a quick look at the replay. But overall, very excited about that landing. landing.
So we'll just clean up the aircraft while we're taxiing um, down. My final thoughts after a couple of hours of flying the aircraft for $34.95, um, it's pretty good. But for $34.95, things am I expecting to have extra things in the menu to make the aircraft come alive and I think that's what um, Alabeo and Carinado are actually missing with um, their competitors such as A2A and now Just Flight. So um, other than that, the sound on the gauges, uh, I'm not a big fan. They need to change it. You know, they're using the same sounds pretty much nearly every aircraft. But other than that, it's um, a very good, clean, crisp and good looking uh, aircraft and um, I have no problem with my decision of purchasing it and I think it was a good one and I'll be um, planning the next flight shortly after this to go and do something else. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Shane, I'm Ozflight Simmer. Uh, if you like these sorts of videos, please hit the subscribe button and I usually have a weekly content out and uh, test drive videos coming out quite frequently. You can also check out my videos on the FS Elite uh, YouTube channel as well. So thanks very much for watching and have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, goodbye.